I'm Chris Darnett, and I have here with me Sarah Villafranco, who is the founder and creator of Osmia Organics. Woo! Sarah, I'm going to powder you from across the screen. Let me just get right here. Okay. <laughs> That's perfect. Yay! Oh, I feel so much less shiny now. Thank you. I know. It's magic. And we've got some really cool questions to ask you because we're featuring you, we being me and Elia Beauty, are featuring you in a collection of iconic green beauty brands because Osmia was around from, what, 2011, 12? 12, yeah. Yeah, 2012. And you have an interesting background. I was, before I started Osmia, doing something that smelled a lot different. Um, I worked in the emergency room as an emergency physician for 10 years. So, I don't want to imagine uh, the smell of that. <laughs> well, there are lots of them, and some of them are less pleasant than others. But, um, yeah, it was a great career in the ER and one that I feel really privileged to have had and one that I think has really informed my position as a green beauty brand founder now. Yeah. So I think that's, you know, that's so interesting and People can definitely read your bio, which goes into even more detail about that. I was reading it, refreshing myself again today, and I didn't realize how much of your mother actually inspired your choice to move from being an ER doctor to being a brand founder of skincare. Yeah, it's funny. It's um, <laughs> so. Yeah, so when my mom, um, my mom was a partner in a Washington, D.C. law firm at a time when there were not very many women partners and women had to hustle really, really hard to become partners and essentially had to like neglect their children. <laughs> um, so she went to law school when I was five and I kind of don't remember that much of her until I was like 17. Um, and so, you know, I thought, um, so there's, that's one piece of it. Like, wow, do I want to be in this, you know, really, um, intense career situation? Um, now six years into owning a company, I can say I work more, uh, at this than I ever did as an ER doctor. <laughs> like when you were in the ER, you'd finish your shift and go home and it's off until the next time you walk in the ER. Osmia is never ever off for me. Um, so that backfired a little bit, but, but later, uh, the way that she played into my decision was, um, sadly by dying, she, um, died of pancreatic cancer and she was 64 and beautiful and it was too soon. And I think, and I had a three month old baby at the time, like in the room when she died. And that does this weird thing where it, compresses the timeline of your life so dramatically and poignantly. And I thought, God, I don't have any idea how much time I have left. And I want to be doing something that feels like my contribution to the world, like my unique, this is only I can do this kind of contribution to the world. I love that. That's so beautiful. And I, you know, I, this probably won't go in the interview, but um, my grandma just passed a week and a half ago, oh, and so when I read that, I thought, well, is it possible that I could bring this up and not make both of us cry, <laughs> or is that a goal? Like, could I just make you cry and me cry in one interview as like a, yeah. a you know, a hook? <laughs> yeah. It's amazing how it's all, it's 10 years now, and it's amazing how the the feeling of missing her still overwhelms me so much. And it's so strange to me that she doesn't know I'm doing this. I mean, depending on your belief systems, right? I mean, maybe she's like right there. I, I don't know. But, um, you know, but she's still so present in the brand. Like our soaps are wrapped in uh, watercolor paper because my mom took up watercolor painting in the last year of her life. It was something she had done in her 20s. And then when she went to law school, obviously, she had to give up a lot of the side projects. And so um, when she was dying, she took up Japanese watercolor painting and she got good at it. And I have some of her paintings at home. And so the I remember being on the phone one time with uh, a buyer from Whole Foods and they said, well, we'd have to change the packaging of your soaps. And I thought, no, no, I don't want to. <laughs> I love that. 
a tribute to my mom and that's this is how it's going to stay so our soaps are not sold at whole foods at the moment but <laughs> um that's why they're wrapped the way they are so she's she's here in a really positive and beautiful way and sometimes sad but mostly beautiful when was the defining moment that you knew you created something really special well, so I think I had I had a bit of a defining moment the day I took a class making soap for the first time. It was at a local um, like ranch where they do sort of community classes, um, like you could do how to compost or you know raising chickens. How different would your career path had been had you chosen the composting class? Really different, <laughs> and more like ER than us. <laughs> um, yeah. So. Um, so I took this class making soap and I took it with a friend of mine who is a veterinarian and I noticed pretty quickly that she and I were picking up the science of it a lot faster than people in the class who didn't have a scientific background. And that sort of was a little bit of a, a flick of a switch for me because I thought I can do this. Like I can figure this stuff out and I don't, you know, I can teach myself and and then when I started, you know, experimenting with different essential oil blends and the, you know, the, the different oil base oils in the soaps to create different qualities in the soaps, I was like so hooked. It's all I thought about all day, every day, in my sleep, all the time, soap. That's where we started with soap. So, uh, I think the one thing I wish everyone knew about Osmia, other than the fact that it's pronounced Osmia, is um oh, all of a sudden I panicked. I was like, did I say it no, wrong? She's like, you've been saying Kristen it perfectly. Like a, lot of <laughs> a lot of people have trouble with it. Um, I think I wish everyone knew how much I obsess about every detail of what we do, from ingredient sourcing to the quality of ingredients. Like just because it has an organic seal on it doesn't mean that it's good enough. Like I need to smell it and touch it and feel it and know that it's premium quality and organic. Um, and I obsess equally about our packaging and about the um, recycled content of our shipping boxes and about using um, the, the type of tape we use for our shipping boxes and the filler in our shipping boxes and the ink in our packaging and every piece of it. I just wanna to go, go like to this now. now. This, this is a filter, I know. This is why you're the icon. Well, I always feel like it's the brand really loses something for me when, um, let's see, uh, the example I like to give is I went to a packaging conference one time and I was talking to these, you know, these salesmen and it's their job to be salesmen. And it's possible that they thought because they were talking to, you know, uh, a woman, that, a beautiful you know, woman, that you, that okay, you can pull say one it. over on me, but <laughs> they, um, they would show me a piece of packaging and say, well, this is great if you want to tell the green story. And I'd be like, I don't really want to tell the green story. I want to do the green thing. So just like telling a story isn't enough for me. I want to execute on it. And, you know, there are pieces of our line that are packaged in plastic, but it's because I've done all the homework about all the options and that really is the most environmentally thoughtful choice, that it is a recyclable package that protects the product and you know, keeps the product fresh for our consumer. So I think I just want people to know the degree of border collie-like focus that has gone into every decision that we make as a brand. Is that your spirit animal, is a border collie? It's, I, it's not even that, it's past that. I am a border collie stuck in a human body. That's what, like, I see it. All you need is slightly more light red hair. Done. We'll get you a white beard. Oh, it's coming in nicely. Oh, white there's beard. your white beard. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> Good. I think those are some, some solid questions. We're going to do the lightning round of questions you were not expecting. Okay, I'm <laughs> I know. ready. I feel like I should have lightning Bring bolts. It. I wish, yeah, I feel like I'm on the Ellen show or something. I, I, it's like there's going to be a hole under me that's going to drop away and I'm going to disappear if I get it wrong. 
I was like, you're not getting a car at the end of this interview. <laughs> I wish I were getting um, at least some new snow tires because I, I had to go home before this interview to get my computer and I didn't make it up my driveway. I did a 180 on the driveway, had to abandon the car, hike up to my house, get my laptop, hike back down and come back into town. So I think I need new snow tires. I know because you texted me and you were like, I'm stuck in my driveway. And notice I didn't respond to that at all. I was just like, how much time do you need? I don't need to know what that means. I don't need to know the driving. details. <laughs> but now that I do, I think you're the coolest Colorado wilderness woman ever. <laughs> Not much faces me. So we're going we're gonna to circle this back to the Border Collie spirit animal confession. Okay. What do you like more? Dogs? or cats, or do you go both ways? Dogs. Definitive answer? Definitive answer, mostly because cats make me sneeze badly. So while I love them from afar, if I pet them, it's a bad situation. Just put some black clay soap on them, they'll be fine. <laughs> what, is, what is something that you do, like a hobby? or an interest that would surprise people? Are you like a secret closet Trekkie? Are you into collecting postage stamps? Do you like Lord of the Rings? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Come on, you gotta have something. Dig deep, Sarah, dig deep. Like, if you follow me on Instagram, I pretty much like fillet open my life on Instagram. So I can't imagine very much would surprise people. Like people know I'm a psychotic exerciser and I'm outdoors all the time. And do you have any uh, tattoos people don't know about that you're willing to reveal right I now? Have, do I have what? Any? Do you have any tattoos people don't know about? I that have two tattoos. Can I we do. see one? Okay. So, so I started, um, <clears throat> I hope my daughters don't watch this, but my first one was at age 16. That's illegal. Uh, I know it was totally scandalous. And I got a little butterfly on my hip. And then when I was 20, I got a little heart on my neck. And then later in life, I realized neither of them really meant anything to me, but I didn't really want to get them removed. So I had them covered with other tattoos so on the back of my neck, I don't even know if it'll show up, but I have the Osnia bird logo. Oh yeah, 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 I see it. Which is there. And then on my hip, I can't decide if it would be appropriate to show it or not. Definitely. Definitely, it's not. <laughs> there you go. It is a nigella flower. Um, wow, what's a yeah. nigella flower? It's called love in a mist. And it that is like a um, bad perfume <laughs> or beautiful blue flower that grows in the mountains. We grow it around our house. It was in my wedding bouquet and it's carved into the front door of our house. So. Wow. And it's tattooed yeah. on your hip. And it's tattooed on my hip. That is really cool. Thank you for showing us. <laughs> <laughs> Serious show and tell. I love it. I'm so excited. This is the best. This is the best Q and A ever. Um, okay, because you know, product, blah blah blah. Right. But right. tell me They're about so the tattoos. <laughs> yeah. This is actually a little bit more serious, but it could be fun too. So, if okay. you had three superpowers to describe yourself, what would they be? I think intuition is probably one of them, and that's like an overused word, but. Um... When, from when I was practicing in the emergency room, even to the way I sometimes develop sense for our product, it's a very gut-based thing for me. Um, I've always been able to walk in a room of a patient and know whether that person was sick or not. Um, and so that was a nice thing to have because I it would sort of put me on the right track. I'm going to dig until I find something or... I don't feel this person probably needs some reassurance and a couple of, you know, reassuring tests and, and is probably safe to go home. So that's in the intuition department. Um, let's see. I think that I am, oh, this is another, it sort of relates to the ER, but I'm really, really calm in very scary situations. So that has really like served me well, both as an ER physician and more importantly, as a mother. Um, I'm like 
I'm really not someone to panic. And I, I'll never forget the day my daughter got hit in the face with a softball um, right in her nose. And, you know, I looked over and she was a screaming bloody mess. And the mom part of me like started to poke her head. And I was like, ah, ER doctor, like <laughs> the ER doc is the one who needs to respond right now. And I was able to stay really calm for her. So I think that's a, that's a good skill. Um, and then I think like the third thing that I do well is to just, my husband calls it the wade right in philosophy. Like we got an awkward situation. I'm going to wade right in, you know, and it's been, it's been good. Like I can talk to people about difficult subjects and I can, and I can do that with my girls too, like raising them and being able to talk about what it's like to be a 10 year old or a 14 year old girl and talk about periods and sex and boys and things without adding a whole bunch of unnecessary baggage or awkwardness to it. I can just be candid about it and be a resource for them. Do you feel complete with this portion of the interview? I think, you know, one other thing that I would say you asked, uh, what sort of makes us successful as a brand. And I think, you know, transparency and honesty, like anyone who knows me knows that there's not like the on-camera Sarah and the off-camera Sarah. And the same is true with our brand. Like what we're showing you and sharing with you, if you come to our facility and walk around, you're not gonna be surprised by anything. You're gonna be like, oh, this makes so much sense. They have nothing to hide. Yeah. So I think, and that's why I share my personal life with everyone because I'm a physician and I want you to know that I'm not just preaching health at you and going out back for a cigarette. I want you to know that I'm doing the hiking and I'm making the healthy meals and I'm spending the time with my kids and I'm walking the walk that I'm trying to get you to walk with me. Mm, I love you for that. I love you. <laughs> oh, well, that was delightful. I'm so glad you added that piece. Well, I feel really lucky that you're in Carbondale, Colorado and I'm in Portland, Oregon and we can actually have a discussion that's do this. video and yeah. people can feel your warmth and your joy and your smile and and see that there's yeah. so much more to you than just like some you know nerdy physician <laughs> creating <laughs> products in her or, lab or I'm definitely a nerdy physician there's no question but you know for me I want people to know that I'm not just a, a CEO who wants to make money like that's just not what we're doing here. I mean, we are, you know, a great company and we're growing and it's going well, but that's not why we're doing what we're doing. And that's, yeah. that's really yeah. what makes you so wonderful. And part of the reason that I was so excited to have you in this, um, in this beautiful collection of products, because it, it's got to be filled with authentic, wonderful brand founders, because when you yeah. started, it was not lots of expos, lots of conversation around green beauty. What was happening at all. in the media, I mean, it was kind of like, oh, you weird hippies, you know? Yeah. Now yeah. people care, which is great, but it's because you guys stuck it through. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely have to, to not care. You have to believe in what you're doing and know that it's right. And um, there will always be people who are not your market. And you have to be okay with that, too. Of course, I'd like to convert the world, right? But, well, you, um, apparently you are running down the street with your soap. Right. One bar of soap <laughs> at a time. That's right. I love that. And that's such a great place to end our interview. So thank you for your time. And thank you, Kristen. Let's just really have nice tea. Oh, let's have tea Skype dates more often. Okay. I'm down with that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye, thank Sarah. You.